Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast. Well, today I'm going to be answering a bunch of your questions through comments and emails. Not, I'm not going to be typing comments and emails to you guys. That sounds stupid for a podcast, but I'm going to be reading the comments and emails that you have sent me to go over. Every once in a while, I'll hit these strides where it seems like I'm putting out a bunch of content that is fucking useful to people. <laughs> Not all the time, but every once in a while, I'll hit like a string of like three or four videos that are fucking bangers, and you guys really latch onto them and come back with a lot of really fucking good questions. And I'm probably going to do individual videos that go into more detail on a bunch of these topics um, for my YouTube channel, um, at Matt Wall, for those of you who are only listening to the audio version and not looking at the fucking moneymaker that is my gorgeous face. So um, I'm going to be kind of going over some of the shit because I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys, a lot of great comments, but also a lot of the questions I've been getting recently um, have been very similar. So this is obviously some stuff that we need to fucking talk about. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're going to be doing here. I'm trying to get like everything back together, get my shit together. I have the new chat book and I haven't put it up yet. Just like um, Fuck You wasn't released like on anything other than just me saying, if you want a copy, send me an email. For those of you who have ordered it in air quotes, I haven't sent them out yet. I'm hopefully going to be doing that. I was going to do it last week and then we had like the storm of the century this week or last week or whatever but like it seems like every time there's a storm it's like the biggest storm that's ever happened because this is southern california and we don't know what to do when it's fucking dewy outside but anyway so i'm going to be sending um those out and for those of you who have like said they ordered it and you're like okay so how am i going to pay because like i haven't sent you an invoice i'm not going to send you the invoice until i send you the book and when i send you the invoice because it's been so long Take as long as you need to fucking get that to me. It's it's no fucking rush. Like, we're all just fucking hanging out here. Um, another thing, um, the mentorship, counseling, consulting shit, um, I do that through, like, you just send me an email, and then I send you a Zoom link, and we sit and chat for an hour. Um, I think I'm going to um, do that through YouTube for now on. Hopefully, if I get my head out of my ass and actually work hard at being fucking somebody who's not a fucking dumbass, I'll have different tiers in the membership thing for um, monthly or weekly uh, consultation calls that we could do where we jump on a call for an hour every week or every month and kind of try to bang out your future. You know, that will be a thing. If that's something you're interested in, let me know. Just drop me a line so I know that there's people who are actually wanting to do that. But that will be something I'm putting together. The Shopify store should be up hopefully this week. God, I hope. After that, the next step is my new website. So fingers crossed. It's just like me to wait until everything needs to be changed at the same time and then do like a big giant fucking massive overhaul. You know, I can't just do a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. I have to wait until it's the perfect fucking storm. So, um, welcome to my chaos. Yeah, what do you think about that? My head is fucking killing me. I'm not gonna lie, kinda hungover. I was up all night drinking and I was doing really good. I just had a couple beers and then around... I don't know, like three o'clock in the morning, I'm like, oh, I need to drink a bottle of wine. And that brings us to this moment in time. For those of you who were um, curious about my back, my back um, is feeling a lot better because I'm on this weird nerve pill. I don't really understand how it works. It like fucking turns off shit in my brain so my nerves don't work. So I'm hoping that if I like stub my toe or like chop my hand off or something like that, I won't feel it. So I don't want those things to happen. But on the off chance that there's going to be a time where I 
damage myself horribly. I hope it's when I have like nerve blockers. Here, here's to, here's to hoping. Another couple things I wanted to talk about. I seem to have a video that is doing very well right now, um, which is kind of bizarre for me. Because typically, if you're watching the video, you'll be able to see this if you're not tough shit. My videos usually go like this. Like, a bunch of people watch them, a bunch of people watch them, and then they plateau. And they just go like that. This one is going, it went up, and then it plateaued a little bit, then went up, and then went up, and then it just went straight up. So, um, that's awesome. Because that rarely happens when you're talking poetry. But I seem to have found the um, golden ticket as to how to make poetry videos interesting in 2024. I'll tell you. First off, you have to talk about a poet that is um, kind of on the edge, maybe, like a little, like, ooh, we probably shouldn't talk about this guy. Um, so I was talking about Bukowski, like I do a lot. Then you also have to be drinking a beer, smoking a cigarette, and be naked in a shower and um, then give someone five tips while you're doing that. Um, not just the one tip that you're thinking of because you're naked in the shower. And apparently, me just doing that, and I was just doing it that way because I was lazy and my back was hurting. And it turns out that that's like a fucking showstopper. So I'm gonna come out and say this right now. I don't want to do a bunch of videos of me in the tub but um, it seems like that's what you guys want to see. So I'm having some really hard ass, like, I don't know what to do. So I don't know. Like, I guess if um, you guys like seeing me naked, like, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll just leave YouTube and go to OnlyFans. Like, what the fuck am I doing here for? Am I right? So yeah, so that was, that was a bizarre a bizarre turn of events. I didn't see that one coming. That's what she said. I want to give a big congrats to Shaylin Marks, who um, just released her chapbook, Pheromones. I'm sure you can find that places. Um, if you go to, I think, shaylinmarks.com, I'll have a link or something um, in the show notes here. But um, go give her some love, because those things are going fast. She had a book launch reading thing um, over in Maryland, and apparently it was quite the hit. I don't know. Maybe if she is a sweetheart, she will let me put some footage of that in this part of the video here. I'll hit her up about that, um, and you can hear her read a poem. And then, um, yeah, and um, I should have her on. It's been a while since she's been on. I should have her on to talk about how she made her book, what she did with it, and all that other shit. Because fucking success stories are good to hear. Am I right, guys? People like to hear that shit. So, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Shaylin, you're, you're on the show next episode, so clear your fucking calendar. I don't really know the details to this yet, but you guys could probably figure it out. I'm going to be on a panel at the Bombay Beach Lit Fest, which is a part of... I think the Bombay Beach Art Fest. I'm not really sure. It's out by the Salton Sea outside of Palm Springs. It's at the end of March. I already forgot the date. It's March 20 something. Pretty sure I'm going to be there selling a bunch of my shit. But then I'm also going to be on a panel with a few other people. I'm going to be on a panel with a few other people talking about kind of the history of zines and zine culture. And then I asked if I can talk a little bit um, about chat books because it's basically the same fucking thing. That should be kind of cool. I will have more info on that. And I want to actually get the coordinator on here to talk about the Bombay Beach lit fest and all the shit that goes on with that and just to talk fucking zines and shit like who doesn't want to fucking do that oh and a couple quick things of things i'm into right now that i'm really digging there's this fucking dude rima are you fucking with me right now there's this dude rima he has this song called calm down i think his name is rima maybe it's rema i don't fucking know but he had this song called calm down and um i think the record label thought it would do better if he had a name attached to it so he did this kind of awful version with Selena Gomez. Look for the version without Selena Gomez. It's better, I think. 
But whatever album that is, it's called like Rave and Roses or Roses and Raves or Reindeer and Lollipops or something. Every song is fucking gold. This dude is mwah, chef's kiss, dude. It's just a great fucking album. Check that out on Spotify. And then I found this chick named um, Suki Waterhouse. I don't know. A lot of you probably already know who the fuck she is. If you're into depressing 14-year-old girl sad emo kind of shit, this is right up your alley. Like, Suki completely embraces my 14-year-old girl sad girl heart. So that's nice. Because, like, honestly, man, for the last fucking 10 years, I've been listening to Lord's Pure Heroin album when I need to channel that part. And it's still good. I was listening to it today. Yeah, in case you didn't know, Lord's Pure Heroin album, one of the best albums of all time. Spend a day listening to just that, and you'll be good. You'll be good. Sure. Like, whatever. So on with the schlow. All right, everybody, it has been two days since I recorded the intro to that, to this podcast, and a truck is going by now. Of course it is. I uh, was hungover, and that's fine. Then I just, I got on one. As you can tell, I had had an enormous amount of caffeine when I was recording that um, intro, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, hopefully I will consume a lot of coffee in the future so I could do that. But I was thinking about it. And I'm like, you know what? I need to just be like normal. I can't be like yelling and screaming and talking about all sorts of nudity and shit when I'm trying to be serious with you guys. Yesterday I was going to do it and I started watching um, YouTube shorts of people falling down. And next thing I know... Uh, like 18 hours had gone by and I had done nothing. A lot of people think I have a very exciting life and um, that's what I did yesterday. So hopefully um, it puts a little bit of this shit into perspective for you. Okay. So uh, today we are going to go through and answer these uh, emails and comments more comments because I feel like I've replied to most emails. Um, this one I have not replied to yet, um, but we're going to hit it. And I'm not going to say who it's from in case they don't want me to know. Um, like comments, they're public. I don't mind showing those. But like when people send me emails, I kind of want to be a little whatever. We were going back and forth a little bit, but um, let's see here. I do have another question, and I realize it's probably a lot to explain, and it's probably too much to type out, so don't worry about it, but I was going to ask you how you put your physical copies of a chapbook together. Precise, I'd like to do, I would like to do what you do one day. However, right now I'm just trying to figure out how to get my stuff into a physically collected form, such as a chapbook. Okay, what I would recommend, first off, don't overthink it, okay? It could be anything you want it to be. You can do a broadside, which is just a poem on a piece of paper, okay? Just a single sheet of paper. You can do um, folded chapbooks where you just take a piece of paper and fold it a couple times, and it's now in some sort of pamphlet book form, you know. Um, if you don't know how to get a computer program to type the words out on the pages the right way, just um, print your poems out, like, just normally, and then cut them out. Do it old zine style and cut them out, tape them to a page that you want it to work so when you turn the pages it makes sense and then take those pages down to a photocopier and put them on and print the pages out like that. Um, it doesn't have to be anything crazy for you to get your work out there. If you don't care, because a lot of people care about physical form, like they want it something tangible. If you can get past that, doing like ebooks or PDFs and stuff like that 
is a, an amazing way to do it. So the most important thing is you getting your work out there, however you get that out there. Um, whether you're posting it online, whether you're um, doing what we were just talking about, like zines or doing actual chat books. Um, I just put a video out. The reason why I didn't reply to this is because I just put a video out um, where I'm putting together the last chat book I made, like at least um, program wise, like what programs I use, how I do it and all that other shit. So again, you can find that on my YouTube page. There is a playlist. Maybe I'll link it. I don't know. Maybe I'll put it here or something if I remember to do this. Um, I have a playlist called like chat books 101. Um, I think that is the playlist where I'm actually showing you how I make chat books because I've, I've done videos like this um, quite a few times. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, so there's that. So now hopefully that was helpful. Does this fit? Let's make me a little smaller. Every woman's dream. Am I right? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I apologize. This says, um, this is from Avery Intelligence from just two hours ago. Like, it's crazy because so many people are still commenting on stuff. So anyway, here we go. Never seen anyone or never seen someone smoke in the shower nor record a 20 minute YouTube video. Everything about this video is insane in a great way. Well, Avery, thank you so much. I will say there are plenty of people who record 20 minute YouTube videos. I did not know that that was such a uh, bizarre thing. Um, smoking in the shower, like, dude, like, do you know what good living is? Like when I go to hotels, the only thing I do when I'm at the hotel is I like hit the shower with like either a six pack of cold beer or a big ass bottle of red wine and like a Dixie cup or whatever the fucking hotel cups are and a pack of cigarettes. And I stay in there until the ceiling starts dripping until like the condensation and the steam start like raining from the ceiling. That's, that's living, you know, that that's, that's the good life there. My bathtub is very weird. So it's hard to stand in my bathtub for longer than an hour but i mean if you're in a hotel man like we're talking a good two to three hour soak that that's life that, that's that's how you do it so i appreciate that you dug um what's going on and you dig the insanity that that's the most important thing but get yourself in the fucking shower with a pack of cigarettes and a six pack for fuck's sake okay let's see here um carol fly how are you doing i'm struggling about finding readers i'm honestly a shit show i suck at social media hardcore carol 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 and this was on my video what does it really mean to be a self-published author? Um, and there's going to be quite a few comments from this. Carol, 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 Carol. Carol. Fucking hell. Okay, so a few things here, Carol. First off, this whole attitude about you being a shit show and you sucking, we got to change this shit. We have to change the way we talk about ourselves. I say stuff like this all the time. Um, rarely do I mean it because deep down, even though um, there is parts of me and times that I hate myself, for the most part, I think I'm pretty fucking awesome. Okay. So we need you, Carol, to think that you are fucking awesome. You are not a shit show, Carol. Okay. You're fucking amazing. Um, you do not suck at social media, okay? Social media is just tricky. Now, I think one of the big misconceptions about social media is that um, you need to have this huge following to make social media work so you can be successful. This is not really true. It is true for certain people, um, but it doesn't. it's not the only way. Like, um, what, what's the saying? There's more than one way to skin a cat because, um, skinning cats 
are something that you know people do all the time now um for those of you who are into the history of certain things i'm sure i will be getting a comment as to why um, there are more than one ways to skin a cat and why people are skinning cats in the first place cats don't seem like things that you need to be skinning very much so i'm sure there's a, a great historical story for that but what you need to understand what everybody needs to get even people who like do really well with social media the click-through rate and then the actual conversion rate of someone from social media actually buying something from you is usually about one percent one percent so that means if i don't I, who who fucking cares how many followers you have but if a hundred people clicked your link from a social media thing probably only one person out of those hundred are actually going to buy the thing that you're talking about social media probably has the lowest return on investment return on time return on anything the people who do really well with their social media are people who have millions of followers and that's why one percent on every post they do is actually okay so if you don't have millions of followers social media is not going to fucking do shit for you. I think if you um, are doing Facebook ads, which I have done in the past, I have not done Instagram ads. So I'm curious if any of you have done that to let me know what you think um, your return on that is. With Facebook ads, like your percentage is going to be higher. But the reason why that is, is because you're not marketing to your people already you're marketing to people who don't know about you yet. Depending on how you do that, I don't know necessarily if you're gonna get a lot of sales on your poetry stuff, if we're talking poetry still, but you probably are gonna get a lot more followers that maybe next time you could convert into something. So this is why I always like push email marketing email marketing your return is going to be anywhere from like to like low end three to five percent okay now that doesn't sound like a lot but compared to one percent five percent is five times more so you get a better return and like a lot of times too if you are really good with your email list you can get up to like 25 to 30 percent on you the emails that you send out don't beat yourself up because you're not like doing what rupee cower does rupee cower is rupee cower the only reason why having a big social media following is worth a damn really is the sponsorship deals that you get from that those are where the money's at it's not like selling your shit to people and then this whole thing um maybe i'll get into this in a little bit but this idea that people have that you have to be giving your stuff away for free on social media to get traction is just bullshit you do not have to be posting free poems on your fucking instagram or facebook or whatever every day it's actually probably hurting you more than it's helping you and if you're interested in that and i don't talk about it today let me know and i'll do a whole other thing on that because that's that's some legit shit so carol chin up you got this don't be so fucking hard on yourself and we will just start focusing on building our audience okay so the next comment we have here is from tempest miller great name by the way let's see have been trying to market my stuff relentlessly on social media and it hasn't really gone anywhere i'm thinking there's an element of maybe i haven't tapped into the right audience but more generally there's a social trust component like, it feels like you either need to give away a lot of your stuff for free, have lots of Amazon reviews, 
or build a months long relationship with someone for them to take up the positive uh, action of giving you money. Okay, so here's the deal, everybody. Just give us your money, okay? Everybody give Tempest Miller your money. Give me your money. Give Carol your money. Give Brian your money. Give Jeff your money. <laughs> Let's just go down the list. No, and this is exactly what I was just talking about. Social media, the, the misconception of it makes people go crazy because they're like, I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to do. Why am I not taking off? Okay. You can post all you want into the void, but if there's no engagement, who fucking cares? The other thing is that a lot of us have problems with, especially fucking poets, but artists in general, is the CTA. And some of you are like, what's the CTA? I don't know what you're talking about. It's the call to action. People need to be told to buy something. A lot of times people might be interested in something, but they need to be nudged in the direction of what to do, okay? You need to say, hey, click here and buy this right now. Like you need to tell people that. It's it's a really weird, it's a really weird thing. So for instance, here, here's a good example. When I was just selling on Amazon, I had my Amazon descriptions, whatever. Amazon has changed the look of the page now um, when you go look at a book. So it's a little bit different now. Um, but it used to be like your description box would open up and then you would like scroll down and the whole page would scroll. So I like in the description, you say what the book's about, all this other stuff, get people excited about it. And then at the end, I would do like different size caps and stuff, like not the whole thing caps, not none of it caps, but here and there. And I would say, so scroll up and get your copy now. When I started putting that in my descriptions, um, I wouldn't say my sales doubled, but got really close to doubling, which is crazy that all you have to do is give someone a command and then they do the thing. So don't be afraid to do that. Consumers want, as much as people say they don't want this, they want to be sold on something. When people are looking for something, they want to be convinced that this is the right thing. And the best way to do that is to tell them all the perks that they're gonna get from reading your poetry, okay? I know that sounds crazy. And then tell them, now buy it, okay? If you don't tell them that, you're leaving money on the table. And I don't mean to turn this all into a money thing, but one of the biggest things that I get annoyed with is this starving artist mentality. Now, yes, I am basically a full-time artist. I have other shit I do on the side that doesn't really push the needle at all. But like, you know, selling stuff on eBay or doing affiliate links in um, like my YouTube video descriptions and stuff like that. So there's other money that comes in. But for the most part, most of my income comes from my books, my poetry, my music, um, my film stuff, my videos here, it's all creative shit. Okay. And I'm not like living the life of Riley, whatever the fuck that means. I've heard it used before, but I'm not, um, starving. Okay. You just have to do the shit. A lot of people have this mentality that it's, um, either romantic or it's, um, accepted that artists will suffer okay that's a you mindset the reason why there are artists that don't suffer and artists that do suffer is because the artists that do suffer do so because they want to suffer okay they think that that's acceptable the artists that do well do well because they do not want to suffer they're like, fuck that. I'm better than that. I'm not going to fucking do that. And that's it. So much of everything we're talking about today is based on your fucking mindset. All you have to do is change the way you think. And I'm not trying to sound like a fucking 
like woo fucking guru thing, but it's fucking true. It's just like this. Like if, if, if it's cold outside and you're shivering, okay, you could either stay cold or you could put on a fucking jacket and go, oh, that's nice. That's a bit warm. I like that. Okay. But you had to decide to put the fucking jacket on. Okay. So with your art, with your poetry, with your books, put the fucking jacket on people. Don't just fucking shiver. Hopefully that was um, a good pep talk. This was just a really good comment from Bookish. It said, um, self-published author is the same as a small independent publisher. You started a business when you self-published that book. If you want people to see it, read it, buy it, you have to promote it and sell it. That's why I've never done it. I'm too damn lazy. <laughs> Dude, it was so funny. Like this whole thing was going and you're like, oh, wow, he's about to drop some awesome wisdom bomb here. And it's like, no, I'm just fucking lazy. I'm not going to fucking do that. But if you are going to do that, that's what you have to do. But that's why I'm not going to fucking do that. So perfect. But that's what that video um, was about, by the way. Okay, and then Jeff from Garage Poets says, where do you suggest spending money on advertising? Which publications? Or do you mean paid ads on Instagram? Yeah, do not spend any money on publication ads. Like, I cannot think of one publication where if you put an ad in it, it will fucking do anything for you. The reason being is because most of these uh, magazines and even websites just in the lit community for some fucking reason. They never tell you what their readership is. They might give you a rough estimate on how many things they print, but they won't tell you like what the actual readership is. Like they might give you like a circulation number, but that doesn't actually mean copies in the hands of a reader. Okay? So, I would stay the fuck away from that. And if you were going to do ads, I would say probably start with Facebook. Um, there's uh, some videos and some courses. See, Facebook and Amazon and all this shit changes all the time as things get better. Like, as technology improves. So, the stuff I learned about Facebook ads probably don't... They're not even the same anymore. They're probably, like, completely obsolete. So I would say um, check a couple, like, videos. Like, just type, do Facebook ads in 2024. And see a few different videos from a couple different people. If any of these people are saying the same thing, I would stick with those things that are similar with those people. Maybe I'll do some research and do a couple Facebook ads and give you guys like a A-B testing kind of thing. Because there are some things that you really want to look at. Like uh, like you want your target audience small. Like don't go super wide. When you go super wide, you are kind of diluting the pot. Maybe I'll just do a video on this. Maybe I, I mean, I haven't done a Facebook ad in a couple of years. Maybe I should get on that um, and we can kind of go through that together. So that, that's a good question. But yeah, um, I would say social media for ads do not do publications. Unless any of you go, wait, this one publication's amazing if you get an ad in it. Then tell me about that. The problem with publications is that you can't click a piece of paper. Okay? So if you have an ad in a piece of paper, people have to read that, think about that, remember that and then go look for the thing whereas if there's something that's just right in front of them like click this fucker and you have this right now that's a whole different thing adam says dude rocks adam thank you you rock my my new friend okay so this is where we're gonna like close up on at least this part of this shit and then we have another question from or statement oh wait no there is a question mark in here from tempest okay and this is um on the video how i make my chat books using scrivener pages google sheets and create booklet long ass title but the seo is tits okay so it says how do you separate yourself from the outcomes of your work hmm this is a very good question Sales data and external validation is, of course, a black hole. But if you're 
not being read as a writer, isn't that like something you can't really reconcile with? Asking for a friend. That's adorable. Um, whether you are or not, it doesn't matter. I have a few thoughts on this stuff. And they're not popular thoughts. I, I've been kind of chewed out about some of these thoughts before. I have a feeling that every poem out there is somebody's favorite poem. No matter how good or bad someone thinks it is. And the reason why I say this is because when I have done things in the past where I was like, um, hey, let me know what your favorite poem of mine is so I could um, put together a list of like best of for like a little collection or so I know what to read at a reading or something like that. The poems that come back are never the poems that I think are my best poems, okay? Why I'm saying this in this instance is because we don't know what our work does for other people. We don't know who's reading our stuff. We don't know, like, if you posted something on Instagram and maybe, like, you got, like, three or four likes on it. One of those people, that little blurb you put, that little poem, that might have been the poem that, like, kept them from doing something very stupid. That poem might have been their favorite poem ever. And they're going to remember that poem forever. They might not remember you, which hopefully isn't the case. Um, hopefully you could keep giving them stuff that they like. But that poem could be the thing that they remember for years and years. Okay? They might get a line from that poem tattooed on them. You know? People do weird shit all the fucking time. Okay? Hell, some people might like your poem so much that they will just totally plagiarize it in something that they write, which is great. Okay? Now, the reason why I bring this up like this is because as writers, as poets, the thing that we need to understand is once we write something, it is dead to us. It is not for us anymore. It is for whoever is going to read it. Okay? Now, what you have to kind of tackle here is when you say um, external validation. Okay? When you're talking about if you're not being read as a writer, like how can you reconcile with that? Like the only way you're not being read as a writer is if you're not putting your stuff out. Okay. If you are putting your stuff out, you are being read as a writer. Okay. Maybe only by one person, maybe by 10, maybe by a thousand, maybe by a million. It doesn't matter. Okay. Because your validation should not rest upon if people are enjoying your work or not. That sounds very counter productive counterintuitive because the more people enjoy your work the more people will buy your work but for you your validation should come from the doing not from what happens after that um, people buying your work doesn't make you a writer you writing makes you a writer okay so that's the first hurdle the first thing you have to um kind of swallow, you know, like just understanding that, um, no matter what, no matter who reads this, it's not for me anymore. I already did the work. I'm the writer. I wrote now, if you're going to be the publisher, then you have to worry about who's reading your stuff and what's happening and sales data and all this other shit. And you find out what works and what doesn't. You know, sometimes I will theme chat books and some of the themes do really, really well. And some of them do horribly. And it's just like, I'm like, oh, that was a fart in church. Um, nobody liked that very much. Okay. Well now, now what am I going to do? So you just have to kind of figure out how to do it and how to go through it. You know, separating yourself from the outcome of your work should happen immediately 
Because as soon as you finish that poem or finish that short story or finish that novel, that is dead to you. It does not belong to you anymore. It belongs to whoever's going to read it. Okay? You should only be focused on what you're writing next, what you're writing today, what you're writing tonight, what you're writing right now. Once you do it, it's done. Okay? Sales data... That is a lot different than external validation because your sales data is hard numbers. That's like factual right there. S external validation, that's like just you feeling good. And here's the thing I'm going to fucking tell you. You're going to feel like shit all the fucking time. You can have a thousand people buy your book and tell you you're great but you're gonna see one bad review from some fucking dumbass motherfucker who's just trolling you and that's gonna fucking ruin your week and make you think that you can't do it anymore like I, I've used this um, analogy a lot but um, like Madonna said one time like she would be performing in a stadium and there's like thousands of screaming fans that just fucking love her. If there's one person there who isn't having a good time, that's who she's focusing on. And that's going to ruin her fucking night. Because there was one person who didn't have a good time. Okay? It's just, it's the artist mentality. We try to please everyone, and we can't, but we always think that we can. And we always try, and then we always feel bad when we can't do it but you will never please everyone. Your work is not for everyone. Your work has a very specific audience, even if you don't know what that is yet. It, it's true, it does. Um, not everyone will like your stuff. Why? Because art is subjective. It just is. Some people like shit, some people don't, and you just have to fucking deal with it. But yeah, your sales data should always be going up. You should always strive to make stuff go up. When you're dealing with that, you need to come up with little things, whether it be a sale, whether it be a special, two for the price of one or something. Like, you got to come up with things to jumpstart stuff. Okay? And, you know, sometimes those things work, sometimes they don't. I noticed when I, and I've talked about this recently, that when I do sales, people don't buy my stuff as much. As soon as they go back up to full price, people buy stuff. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with people when I'm trying to do them a favor, but um, they want to give me their full money. So I will take their full money and I appreciate it. And I give you all kisses. If you're not being read as a writer, isn't that like something you can't reconcile with? Who fucking cares? Like, if you're doing this for the money, then yeah, it's going to hurt if no one's reading your work because you're going to notice this when you're not making any money. But other than that, as a writer, who fucking cares? As a publisher, that might be a fucking hard pill to swallow. And you got to figure out a way to make that work. And yes, as you asked or said in another thing, sometimes like spending a month, like, working on one person to have them like fall in love with your work that's great but the problem here is is that if you're spending a month trying to get someone to buy your work if they do buy it it's because they've like metaphorically fallen in love with you and not your work and that's kind of a big thing that um a lot of people deal with and like when i did that video on rupee cower a long ass time ago and we were going through her Instagram posts and she would have this like really trite, plain ass, basic bitch fucking poem in her little square picture. It's just like whatever. But when you read the, the description underneath, that's why people like Ruby Cower. Because she's going like, like the poem says something like, you're worth it. Heart. Okay. But then the description underneath it is like, um... If you've ever felt like people are making you feel less, know that that's bullshit. You got this. You're amazing. You're as much as you want to be or whatever. The, the description of these poems is what's making people love Reapy Cower. Not the shit poem and not like people going, oh, wow, yeah, that's me. Like, feel loved. Yeah, that's a great poem. I love that. I really need to hear that. No, they love the the commentary Rupee puts on her poems. 
and they love the strength that it sounds like comes from Ruby Cower. And that's why they love her shit. Her poems are like fucking secondary or third dairy. That's a fucking thing. I don't know. Um, shit there, you know? And that's just how that is. I don't know if this is helpful at all, but again, this is why I'm always saying that in today's world, you know, where publishers don't really mean a whole lot. And if a publisher puts somebody out, like that used to be a big deal because it's like, oh shit, this publisher is putting somebody out? That means they have faith in them. We need to pay attention. None of that shit matters anymore. Everything is about the, the artist. Like we live in a social media age where people want to live vicariously through people and through their art. I would just say for all of you out there, if you're gonna take one thing from this, take this. Quit trying to be somebody you're not on social media. Quit trying to impress people on social media and make content on social media that is in line with who you are. Stuff that you're interested in, stuff you like, stuff you dig, you doing something fun, and then have other posts about your poetry. So it's like, hey, I'm this fucking cool motherfucker, and also here's my poetry. And try that and see if anything changes. Okay? Because, like, the world we live in right now, you cannot just be words on a page. Especially when the words do not connect. Like, go back and watch that Five Lessons from Bukowski to better your writing while in the shower video. Okay. There's a reason why some poets connect and others don't. There are, it's funny, like people have been kind of sending me different poets to check out on social media. They're like, oh, have you checked this guy out um, or check this girl out? Like their stuff's kind of, kind of cool, you know, but it's, it's really good. And then you read the stuff and it's like, there's just no voice. Like, you have no idea who the person is. You have no idea where they're from. You have no idea. Like, anybody could write this. And I know a lot of poets out there love that. They love, oh, yeah. Wow. That is a way to describe a tree. I'm, I'm on board. That is what a tree is like. Yes. I don't know if in today's age that's enough. You have to really lay it on the fucking line a little more. Be a little heavier with it, you know? I have seen some really good poets who do not let themselves be known, like, on social media or to their readers, and they don't take off. And I don't understand it because their shit is really good. But they kind of hide who they are. They kind of want to float through social media anonymously. And they don't understand why their shit ain't taken off. And it's just because, like, nobody knows who you are. And I know that goes straight against what a lot of people are taught to do. But, like, if, if you're doing marketing, you have to market your work. And in order to market your work, you have to market yourself. Like, you have to be the thing. Okay? So figure it out. And if you have questions, like, if you want to get into more granular detail, I can help you do that if you want. Um, but you don't need my help. Like, you just have to be you. But I don't know. Sometimes people need someone to tell them that over and over again. So, yeah, if you want to do, like, a consult or mentorship or anything like that, um, just send me an email, ihatemountwallgmail.com, and um, we can talk shit. If any of you would like to come on the podcast and talk about stuff you're doing, and it doesn't even have to be the art you make. If you just want to have a fucking conversation and then promote your shit, hit me up. Let's do it. Oh, it's Valentine's Day today. Um, let's just get into the butt plugs since we're talking about Valentine's Day. All right. So welcome to the butt plugs. Today, um, I'm going to 
not use too much lube. We're just going to go straight in and tell you to take a deep breath. That's cold now because I've just been running the liquor because this is a fucking podcast. So, of course, I'm just going to talk. Jesus Christ. Let's see. Shailen Marks's um, pheromones. It's out now. Hopefully, there will be a link for it. Um, if you want any of my chapbooks, hit me up. Let me know which ones you have, which ones you don't have. The ones that are still available, if you click on any post on my website, on the right-hand side, you will see which ones of my books are sold out and which ones are still available. And if you want any of those, hit me up and we'll do something. Like, um, let's let's run a special. If you buy three, I'll give you one for free. Okay? And we'll do free shipping domestically. Okay? So there's a good little fucking deal. Getting everything back on track here. Because um, once I put the store up, the prices are going to go up. Okay? Now I know every time I tell you guys I'm running a sale or anything like that, you guys kind of balk. I don't know why. But I'm, I'm trying to fucking save you money right now. Okay, people? So, like my newer books, um, I should probably have them and show them to you guys. But um, One Man Massacre, there's only 15 of those. Um, the first five are signed and numbered on cardstock covers. The um, remaining 10 are um, numbered and on paper covers. So that's kind of an interesting little thing. Fuck You, I still have copies of. Abnormal Brain, I don't have copies of. That sold out. What came out before that? I can't remember. Maybe On the Beach and Drinking Less. I still have some of those. Um, and I still have uh, Me as an Action Figure. I should just fucking have them and show you guys. Since we're talking about this, let me go get them. This is fucking stupid. My September chapbook that I couldn't remember. Poems Over Pussy. That's out. Um, you could grab that. Um, I just picked up a couple older ones too. So Panic. This is um, one of short stories. There's four kind of novella-ish short stories in here. Um, you grab that. Me as an action figure. Kind of um, childhood poems of mine. Um, let's see. On the Beach. This was a one-day um, poem thing where I wrote a chapbook and a... In a day, and then as you can see, like that's underneath because it's a vellum cover. That's kind of cool. Um, drinking less. Each one has a um, wine stain on it that's different than every other one. So each one is amazingly individual. Abnormal brain. I don't have any more of these up, so I don't know why I brought that over. Um, fuck you. Very angry poems. That is a thing, and. Then we have One Man Massacre, the new one. Um, very depressing shit. So, yeah. And that's the stack that I have here. So, yeah. Um, and I have a bunch more. And then I have the books, too. Um, the End of Everything uh, paperback. I'm running out of those. And um, Winner, Your Mom's Taught Me Prize for Poetry. Those are going. Um, so that's kind of cool. And I'm also, again, I'm going to be at the Bombay Beach Lit Fest at the end of March. And I'm going to be selling a bunch of stuff there, too. And I'm trying to remember what else I wanted to say. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's what we'll do. If you buy three chat books, um, I'll throw a fourth one in. So write me an email, ihatematwall.gmail.com. Tell me what books you want out of the ones that you could pick from the side panel on my website. And um, I will tell you how much that will be. Free shipping domestically. And um, depending on how many books you get, I will be able to tell you um, how much international shipping will cost. And then hopefully my Shopify store will be up um, this week. Um, also, the mentorship, um, consulting stuff. Hit me up. At I hate Matt Wall, gmail .com if you want to do that because I will be moving that to YouTube and it'll probably cost a little bit more on YouTube because YouTube takes a huge cut of anything I do on YouTube. I kind of like having everything in one place so it's almost like the cut is fine I guess whatever um, but you know like I'm 
supporting myself as an artist and god damn it i deserve it and um just give me your money and everyone will be happy all right so that's that's your call to action give me money okay so figure out how much money you have extra and then give that to me so with all of this said keep buying my books join the anarchy crew type hard and i will talk to you all later I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.